Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we are starting with our first conversation for the day. Now, after days of negotiations and disagreements, the preferred candidate of President Mohamed Buhari for the position of the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, was ratified as the new party chairman late Saturday night. The ratification of Adamu and other members of the incoming National Working Committee and zonal leaders of the party was part of activities at the convention of the party, which commenced on Saturday and ended in the early hours of Sunday at the Eagle Square, Abuja. Now joining us now to discuss the aftermath of this and the future and chances of the party, uh, we expect Njidi Johnson to join us much later, but we have Ibrahim Oshinawa, a Secretary of Medical and Risk APC Convention Planning Committee. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, Oshinawa, thanks for joining us on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Baby. All right. First of all, we must say... Um, <coughs> Con okay, well, I think Judy Johnson is um, joining soon. Uh, we must say congratulations on um, the convention which held them um, over the weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me. And, um, it's been a tough night. Um, we thank God we had a successful convention. It's been all week long, you know, busy, you know, trying to put things in place, you know, programming, you know, convention ground, security. You know, uh, I give it to accreditation committee who has done a very good job All in right. terms of, you know, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, you, I, I was just going to ask you how successful is successful, as you have put it, now, because uh, it's been um, days, months, or even more than a year of um, you know issues uh, with the APC, and finally March 26 came and the uh, the convention held. But would you really say that? Um, all the internal wranglings have been, you know, have been put under control with this uh, particular convention. Would you say that it is Uhuru for the All Progressives Congress yet? I, I would quickly say that you should try and get the script of the national chairman. You know, his uh, you know acceptance speech. He did mention that we would like press to work with us. You know. Well, there's no one calling our party again. The convention has been done and dusted. We have moved forward. There is nothing to discuss about, uh, you know, um, um, issues here and there. Uh, he called on the Nigerian media to report what is going on in the party, to find out what is going on. Uh, we employ media, Nigerian media especially, to please, you know, uh, get to the secretariat and get the direct information. Our party is one. We are one now. It's not easy to have, you know, with the 2020 electoral law, it's not easy to have, a, you know, a consensus of candidates, uh, despite the fact that we have election in other, you know, positions that, you know, winners were declared. It's not easy. So we have to, it shows that we have unity in our party. We are one big family. And we are doing everything to ensure that, you know, we give the Nigerian state a good governance. So there's no issue in our party right now. We are one, you know, uh, 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 up until last night, I was on the field. And, uh, you know, uh, when uh, I was called for this interview, in fact, it was a very, very, uh, you know, you know uh, tight one for me, but because of the respect I have for the stations, I have to be here. So we have no issue in our party. We are doing very well. We are, the convention is off the table now. We are just moving forward. We are looking forward. I will give thanks to God, give thanks to President Mohamed Rari. And the national chairman has started on a solid work. So we are moving forward, extremely moving forward. You know, so that's what um, I, I, I see. You know, so there's no issue in our party. We are forging ahead. All right, uh, thanks for the opening salvo. But we'll, we'll, we'll come back to um, the APC and then, um, you know, the way forward. But uh, we also have um, joining this conversation uh, G. Day Johnson. Uh, he's uh, the chief um, lecturer at the Nigeria Institute of Journalism, uh, NIJ. Thanks for joining us also, G. Day Johnson. Good morning to you. Good morning to be with you. And good morning to with our viewers and also with uh, my co panelists. Um, so she know nice to see you. All right, merci. Yeah. Okay, um, so Gina Johnson, it's good to have you join us uh, this morning on the show. Yeah, merci. It's a pleasure to be with you. So let's take it off from this point. We remember the time where the issue, um, you know, was 
We remember a time where the issue was with section 82, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act and also uh, section 84, subsection 9 of the Electoral Act, uh, talking about stipulating written consent of all candidates. I mean, if you get to a point where you say there should be a consensus, and we saw all of the signatures mm -hmm. that were put out there. Uh, do, you see, do you still see anyone being disgruntled or any defection after this time out? Well, then, it's too early for us to see that. But time will tell. This is just the first of the limitless test that the party will face. The limitless test comes with the, with the primaries for selection of candidates for various offices across the nation for 2023 election. It was evidently clear, like um, Mr. Shinawa said, it's looking at the provisions of the Electoral Act it's, uh, and its APC uh, to its credit. Um, that has applied the Electoral Act in its convention. That was said this Saturday. So, um, when you look at the stringent provisions for consensus agreement, you see that for the National Chairman Office, there was a letter written on behalf of other aspirants by Senator George Akume. Whereas for the National Secretary position, we saw um, to the platform to still be. I said that, for example, the former minister of Barista Shiki from Western, where many party members, because the consensual arrangement was not, consensual arrangement means consent. It was not, it was not consulted. There was no discussion with respect to that. But you know, this is just the embryonic stage. There will be teaching problems, and I'm sure they will be able to deal, hopefully they will be able to deal with the issue of teaching problems. We saw the, the national one leader too. Someone came up and said, no, I'm not stepping down. Um, for the youth leader, someone came up and said, I'm stepping down um, and started, started, started weeping. So uh, it's, to a large extent, the convention was, was successful in the sense that after almost two and a half years, APC was able to have an elected um, leadership at the, at the party at the party level, but when we talk in terms of the organization of our, I'm not too sure that they'll be happy with the general aesthetics, the general aesthetics of, of the convention, because if you are told and you are watching, um, the, in terms of the logistics, in terms of the arrangement, in terms of the timing, I think that um, they can do better, and I'm sure they will have learned their lessons from what, from, what, uh, from what we witnessed on Saturday to Sunday morning. All right, Mr. Shinoa, now let's still talk about, uh, Gide just mentioned about the aesthetics of the party now, but I just want to find out with the aftermath of um, the, um, the Congress and all, uh, would you say that all um, um, members, as it is, uh, are really happy with um, the process involved that, although before now some people uh, felt like um, it was more like an imposition, what are the feelers that you are getting so far? Fortunately for me, I've not had, um, I've not feel, uh, you know, had people saying that I'm in position, you know. I'm actually on the field from um, last week, Monday, till yesterday evening. So there's nothing like that in position, you know. Like what uh, my dear brother and friend, Mr. Jide said, um, you can see letters from other candidates, you know, willingly, you know, uh, complying with the electoral heart. You know, voluntary withdrawal from the from the uh, elections, and uh, some of them, the way we have a consensus candidate, of course, letter must be written. So it's a perfect convention, and there's no perfect election anywhere in the world. Mm, you know, a lot of people, you know, independent media have rated our own convention, you know, far higher than the one of PDD. So we thank God for that. So convention issue right now, you know, is you know done and dusted. It's gone. So we are forging ahead. We have a very limited time to conduct our primaries and, you know, submit our name home before uh, August, um, July 4. So a lot, a lot on our plate right now to do that, to look at any, any side of traction or anybody talking or anybody feeling, you know, the convention is somehow, so we are, we are, we have conducted a very uh, successful and, you know, you know, peaceful convention. You know, you can see no workout, no nothing. You know, upon on Saturday, I was still at 5 a.m. We we're still on feed. You know, some contentious issues like you know, people who want to 
contest an election, you know, like women leader, they voted and they win a match. So there's no, all those um, people talking from one thing or the other, these are just side attractions. And if you're a busy personality, you don't look at side attractions, you focus on what you're doing and you forge ahead. So I can assure you, APC has conducted one of the best conventions ever in this country and we'll continue to forge ahead. We won't look at, you know, all the naysayers, all the, you know, Ula Balu from anybody. So we want to forge ahead and we've done that. We thank God all our officers have been sworn in. They are, they, some of them will resume office today under the leadership of Governor Abdullah Adamu. If you remember, we we'll discuss about uh, Senator Abdullah Adamu. He's one of the credible leaders of our party. You know, party administration is different from governors. So it, it requires a lot of political history, wisdom, you know, and sometimes, you know, you know, um, um, wealth of experience to manage different diversity within a larger party like ours. So there's no, I, I want us to focus on, you know, the future. You don't you hear or look at people saying this is not right, this is, so we have to move on. That has been, you know, that has been take over, you know, over our table. So convention is, is, is gone and we are looking forward for the next four years to conduct another one. So we are good to go on our promise. Well, but, but let's also look at some of the concerns. I mean, uh, this is the ruling party that you're talking about, and I'm sure that's why Nigerians are very concerned. And of course, uh, the conversation would continue to go on just before we bring in Jide Johnson. A strong issue that the PDP has actually raised uh, concern is that uh, it's, the PDP has said that the uh, Damu, that's the chairman, has fraud issues. And of course, we know that uh, for sure fraud charges uh, that's been put out, especially by this government. Uh, you know, looking at the sum of 14 billion naira, 15 some quarters would say. Uh, so how do you, how does your party intend to, you know, manage all of this and how do you react to this? You know what, anybody can, anybody can um, distinguish senator, uh, uh, distinguish senator Ucheo, I don't know, remember his name, the PDP uh, national chairman. He was a senator. He had a, um, he had a case with him when he was a senator. Back, sorry, when he was a, a beauty chairman of PDP in 2003. You know, these are allegations and these are, you know, they call it prognosing in local language. You know, why can't he face, you know, the article issue, the Tambora issue, the Saraki and the rest of them? Yesterday, they are money bag. We can just declare that he's running for an election and he's going to bench all of them in their 70s. Why can't he face that? Why, why is he looking into a successful party like us, a, a man that, you know, uh, um, has led a very successful state like Nasarawa, is a senator, is a chairman of our reconciliation committee. Why is he looking at that? So maybe, 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 maybe the reason that he's looking at that is because for a party as the APC, which is a ruling party, and on the premise mm. that, you know, the party... Uh, it's been looked at. You talk about the issue of integrity and credibility. And so for a political party, and if the president is going to have a consensus candidate, and if the party would be having any candidate, don't, wouldn't it be good to have anyone not having any of the skirmishes or, you know, fraud issue allegation on the side? You have someone, uh, you know, for the status of the party, as one would say. Maybe it's on that premise that this issue has been put out. These are allegations. I'm going to pick from your words. You know, I'm a student of English and I'll continue to learn English. That's why the father is not my mother tongue. Allegations. Anybody can say, Dr. Shinova, you stole this car. You take me to court. You have to prove it in court beyond reasonable doubt. If you are saying 13 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion, you take it to court and prove it. They can also petition. I think the man is right now. He doesn't have something to do that's very tangible. That's why he's, you know, he's prognosing. He's unable to even resolve uh, those state issue. Just uh, those states here. He's unable to curtail Wiki, who is funding his party, who is disrespecting all the elders of the party, talking to everybody as if his father is the owner of the party. I mean, the governor of the state, his excellency. So he should face all those things, all those, you know, all those inch in his party. You know, you said allegation. I would like discuss allegation. If you find that Adamu, if a law, if a competent court of court of a competent jurisdiction find Senator Adamu uh, um, guilty, then we can discuss it. Right now, this is an allegation. 
And, 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 and you know, for the image, you know, everyone is looking at the image of the party. And one will wonder that the APC would rather go for. The image, the image has nothing to do. It's a mere allegation. I can say this, my friend here, stole his wristwatch. I have to prove it in court. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be out of place for me to say he's a thief. So these are mere allegations. Look at Governor Bia. He was arrested at the airport. He was brought to the EFCC. He was questioned, but the rest has to be, you know, domiciled in the court of law to prove otherwise. So it doesn't affect the image of the party in any way. Most of them in the PDP has one or two cases, and we are going to follow but the but it, their cases independently. So it does not, I will advise that we should focus on the leadership, of, on the progress of our party. All those uh, jobless people in the PDP looking at you know, somebody alleged that they stole this. Well, let's, let's, let's bring in Jide Johnson. Let, let, let's bring in Jide Johnson. He's still on standby. Jide Johnson, how would you react to this issue? Uh, the issue of, you know, fraud has been alleged. Uh, you have the PDP saying, hey, um, this is it. You have the national chairman, a consensus candidate of the APC, with a fraud allegation. And this is, you know, a party where uh, the mantra is fighting corruption. And one would think that if you're going to have a candidate, then you would look for one without any of this allegation. The, the records are in the public domain. Um, they are there in the public domain. They are there in uh, online care can be assessed with my view to respect to APC fighting court. It's deception of the highest order. I've said this as far back as 2015, that it's deception of the highest order that the APC to be seen to fight court. One. Then two, for people to try to distinguish between PDP and APC. I've also said it's deception of the highest order that we have chameleonic political parties because there's no difference between PDP and APC. The interesting thing is that the political class don't care about us. All they care about is for political power. If you look at the history and the antecedent of the actors and players in APC today, the majority of them are in PDP. And if you look at some of the actors and players in PDP today, some of them, some key players were in APC in 2014. So who are they deceiving? They can't be deceiving themselves and be playing to the gallery, playing the ostrich. And um, they can't deceive some of us. And we are like that. So there's no government that is fighting corruption. It's just that we have fought corruption on the pages of newspaper. I personally have done more than 50 programs that have said APC is not fighting corruption. That body administration is not fighting corruption. So nobody should deceive. You can't fight corruption on the pages of newspaper. You fight corruption on putting in place systemic issues to deal with the issue of corruption. The corruption in NDCC, the corruption in NNPC, there are many, many corrupt cases that have not seen the light of the day. So don't let us go to that. No party, no political party, either PDP or APC, no political leader should come out and tell us that their party wants to fight the culture. It's not the decision of the of the highest order. With respect to the antecedent <coughs> of the national chairman, um, the national chairman of 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 APC elected by the party is the senator. I hope he will resign. I don't know what the what I think should be done today is for him to resign his senatorial seat. So that they resign, that should have been the first thing they should do. Um, as a, as elected senator representing Nasara West, and he has been elected. What we should see in the media today is that it's resignation from from being the senator of um, Nasara Nasara West. However, I've said it over time, and I said it the last time we spoke about this. Issue. The parties in Nigeria don't have conventions; they have coalitions. I I, I told you on Friday when we had Mr. Power review that you grab your popcorn and get your subject and watch the coronation ceremony. What we have seen, either in PDP or APC from 1999 to date, and that has not helped us to deepen democracy. Whoever the stakeholders, they are, uh, the governors brought Adam to Shemole. They, they were the major stakeholders. Uh, just like the governors brought Iyota Ayu for the PDP. So, um, we, 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 we can't play to the gallery on the basis of partisanship. The reality of the matter is that we have never had a successful convention with partisan politics in Nigeria from 1999 to date from the ruling parties that we have had, either in APC or in PDP. Who was coronated? Uh, second was coronated. Your child was coronated. So four years from now, what we see is that you will see that they will organize conventions and they will call a list, a unity list. Here yeah, the governors will now allocate positions, we allocate positions to, to themselves, to their state, and right. the anointed candidate 
will be picked as the consensus candidate. All right, I want to bring in um, Oshinawa into this discussion right now. A lot of Nigerians uh, are beginning to uh, talk about, um, you know, the uh, capabilities and, of course, um, the interests and, of course, <coughs> what lies ahead of um, the ABC in the coming days. Uh, specifically, there's a video making the round uh, where it's... Uh, 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 it's as though um, the, the new APC chairman has some sort of um, inclination or some sort of um, bias towards um, the, the herdsman. When specifically he was saying that um, if um, 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 spare part dealers can be protected, why not herdsman? Would you, would you really say that uh, uh, he actually has um, the interest of um, all Nigerians and hearts um, in, in the wake of uh, herdsmen and uh, you know, farmers and killings that um, we have experienced um, in the country, Oshinawa? Of course, I'm privy to the, um, to the video you are talking about, uh, but let me digress a little bit. Um, a lot of Nigerians have been saying that you know, party politics especially in APC and formation of PPP and the rest of it. In the U.S., if you can go back to the history, I've attended so many conventions of the Democratic Democrats since 2003. Some, I think maybe two, I think I missed two. Maybe one, I missed one. If you look at the history of the Republican, the Democrat was amalgamated from the Republicans, half of the Republicans, some of them that crept out of the Republicans are the ones that formed the Democrat. So it's not a big issue in party politics because the politics, politics is all about interest. And when you find out that your interest is not protected, your ideals and ideas are not captured, you can extract and form with your team member or with your like minds and form a political party. And that is what is happening in APC. The distinguished there's no distinction between what happened within the Democratic and Republican spirit and what happened. I have never been to PDP of my life. I've been from the SDP to um, AD, ACN, and the rest. Of and we have so many like that who has not, you know, conscripted. But that does not suffice that others who are progressive minded who find that, okay, now they are born again, like my friend, Dino, and come back to APC. And our party. If you say our party has not been fighting corruption, that is not true. You can write to the EFCC and find out cases that have been determined. That's by the side. Um, on the video clip you mentioned, Governor Abdullah, the student senator, and presently the chairman of our great party, is addressing a particular issue, not generalized. It's a vast Nigerian, you know, uh, lover of Nigerian culture and community, you know. Yeah, he, he has he has relation in the southwest, in the southeast, in the northeast, in the north, both the north and the south. So he's a Nigerian, he's a patriotic man. So he's not casting anybody. He was a lovely people. I benefited immensely from Hippo man. You know, till today he's one of my high com. He particularly Hippo man from Obosi. And the present minister of of um, environment, Sharon Ikeazo. I've been my family friend for more than 29 years. Even when his younger brother um, um, is the head of a major bank in this country, in fact, most of my Christmas, sometimes I will be in an ambassador. So, Governor Abdullah has friends across the board. So, he's not casting anybody else that someone, uh, if president can protect spare parts seller, why can't he protect the full land? The full land is at the spare parts sellers. And Nigeria, and everybody is under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, and he sworn to the constitution to protect all of us. So, and I believe the president is doing fantastically well on that, protecting all Nigerians. So, mm -hmm. Governor Abdullah, that section of the clip is not the full one. He, you know, John, you know, the media just point that out, just to, you know, I don't know their aim and objective. They just point that out to capture some other, you know, negative attraction about him. If you so invariably, are you saying that, um, that the, the EOTC chairman does not have a bias for? Sorry? So are you saying invariably that the, the new APC chairman does not have a bias for the full and the No, 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 no. He's a, he's a father of all. He's just addressing a conventional issue. For instance, I'm a Obama, I'm a proud one. I'm a proud Obama. 
Mm. There is no way it should will happen. And Mr. Jide, who is there, will be there that he won't have at least a little, you know, support from me. You know, there is so, so, like, like, you know, uh, Nigeria, actually. I'm not saying he's addressing or he's giving full anima who is kind of for seven and eight. Uh, uh, Any full uh, anima uh, kind of seven and eight. Okay, let, let, let's allow Mr. G.D. Johnson to speak for himself. G.D., go ahead. Now, I think that um, just back in what Mr. Shinawa said, I think that he was speaking out of context and the media has a role to play to contextualize content. It's important. Um, the narrative was changed because a soundbite was taken out of it. And when we take, take issues out of context, it's, it alters the narrative. I think the thesis of his argument is government should provide protection for all Nigerians, regardless of their trades and whatever. Um, even in as much as I don't share some of his views for some certain things, but I think that particular issue was taken out of context. And it is not good for this country. It will harm the members of the division. We must okay. do something that must promote unity and what have you. If government, what is saying is if government is protecting and taking money to protect the banks, government should also take money. If there's nothing wrong in government taking money to protect the yes, they are Nigerians as well. And I agree with him. There's nothing okay, Gide Johnson. Stopping government from taking money to protect the fishermen. Yes. Fantastic well. point so, you have raised there. Yeah. And uh, we do appreciate your thoughts on, on you know, this issue. But as we you know, coast it down, because we're almost out of time, let's look at this now. Uh, for the APC convention, as much as there's a lot of uh, you know, clapping and you know, cheering and the fact that you know, it was a successful one, uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts on the issue if the convention was conducted you know, in line with the Electoral Act. And let's not forget the bone of contention uh, you know, that came up just before that um, convention started. We're looking at the Electoral Act as amended uh, 2022, uh, section 84. Uh, that, that at the time the presidency or the president made a request that it should be deleted. So um, at this point, we don't know if it was deleted because at, as at now, you also hear the Senate saying that, uh, um, you know, they're about to declare the seat of Abdullahi Adamu vacant. So apparently, I, I'd like you to share your thought. Do you think that the convention was conducted in line with the Electoral Act? It respected, you know, the Electoral Act. I think you know it's a new, it's a new act, and there will be some ambiguity with respect to its, its, its application. I'm sure what the legal things of APC will be doing is to see whether they comply totally. But I can tell you from what we witnessed and from what we have read from the letters of the law and not the spirit of the law in this context, now, which is left for the judiciary, the, the lawyers to interpret, is that APC has complied to, to, to a great extent with respect to it. And you know, I started when we looked at the national chairman needs to resign. His appointment as uh, his, his, ele his, his election as, as the senator representing Nasara West. Above all, my final take on this is that is the death of progressive politics in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Shinawa, that is there, and my brothers, my kid and kin that are from the South West, that have the progressive ideology, they just witnessed their death knell. They've been nailed to the coffin. There's no platform for them in APC. And I'm sure, um, I'm, I'm sure most of them will not run the election on the APC platform. Probably they will go back to SD and run the election because Mr. Gide, are you are you are you, are you, are you in process? <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 clear that the ultra conservative element, the ultra conservative element, has taken over a house that was built by the progressive elements of Nigerian politics to have an all -inclusive, all inclusive party that have everybody. But APC is no longer from what we witnessed as a strategic communication. Expert and as someone that has an understanding of the political landscape, is the death of the progressive ideology. Can I ultra conservative? Okay, can I quickly come back? Yeah, let me very, very quickly, quickly say very quickly this. as we round off. Let me quickly say this. You yeah. know, you know, party formation. I agree with you because a lot of people we, we are discussing what you you know raised the, uh, almost uh, three a.m. yes this this morning and uh, first. I will first of all appreciate Mercy for accepting that we have done a very good and credible election com in compliance with the law. Number two, Mr. Ajide, I share your view, but I am not really in compliance with that view. Don't forget that the party is run by two major forces, the National Secretary and the National Chairman. 
And if you look at, you know, Senator Mishore, who is a sound-minded person, who is now leading the administration of our party, there is no way any agenda that ultravires to the ideal of the progressive will be erased totally. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So let's cross our fingers. I believe the chairman is a fantastic man. He is the father of all. And Omi Shore is, Omi Shore is not of the progressive ideology. Like, he's not. Omi Shore, don't forget, he's a founding member of the AD in the Southwest. Don't forget that. A lot of people does not know. You know, a lot of things that... No, I'm, sure was, you, I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you know that. Uh, well, at this point, at this, at this point, at, at this point, gentlemen, we have to let you go at this point. But quickly, um, so we just share your thoughts briefly on it, and so we have some. I mean, we have uh, viewers on the other side as well. So we have to put ourselves together as we do this. But um, I will allow uh, Mr. Shunawar to share his thoughts briefly, uh, just in a few seconds. The question is, uh, with the National Working Committee, with the election and all that you have uh, come up with at this point, the national leadership, uh, the youth leader, the woman leader, and everyone that, you know, had the whole consensus, um, how is it put again? The consensus list given, the or list. the unity list that led them to becoming the candidate. Uh, is this the best, all of these candidates, this the best that, you know, uh, the party can come up with? Don't Just in a few seconds, in a few seconds, please. We have, um, we have some elective positions that we have a consensus on arrangement in compliance with the 2020 electoral law. So we have no we don't need to worry. You know, we, are, we we've concluded that in compliance with the extant law of this country, some of the governors, some of some of the elected commissioners, ministers are not allowed to vote at the convention. It means that we have complied diligently. Nobody commissioners are just spectators. Some of them are in their hotel rooms. Ministers are not allowed to vote. Okay. You can imagine that. So G we, Gide Johnson. We, we all right. All right. Yeah. Gide Johnson, Gide Johnson. One final word from you right now I would be uh, uh, what are the tasks ahead of um, Adamu, you know, to ensure that um, the parties stay united and, of course, they face, uh, you, right. know, you know, the issue of uh, maybe uh, trying to control the machinery of government again in 2023? Unity, unity of the unity list will be tested with the primaries. So just grab your popcorn and your ice cream and be ready to observe what happens with the primaries, which you soon start in NS. All right, all right, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. All right, thank and you I so much. Myself and Mr. Oshinawa can come back and then we have all right, you're welcome. All right, uh, thank you guys. We've had Thank Ibrahim Oshino and, of course, uh, Jude Johnson join us as we uh, look at um, the APC convention with um, Abdullahi Adamur emerging as national chairman. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and still talk about um, more politics in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>